what did uh, Joe Dodge say yesterday? Joe Dodge was like talking about how at the comedy store, he's like, yes, yeah, so I just wear a dress. Well, I know like uh, at, like alt rooms are like, oh, the comedy store is bro but everybody's just cool at the store. They don't give a shit. Right? Like, yeah. But then I'm like, bro, when, what does that mean, bro -y? What does that mean, do you think, when somebody goes, oh, I heard the comedy store is really bro -y. I've heard that a few times. Uh, I have a vague idea of what I think it means, but what do you think it means? I think they mean that they, the audiences are largely men and they're largely a certain oh, you think type of man. Yeah, I think the. I mean, I it's certainly certain shows that so, uh, whoever the think headliner that, is, like that. I thought will yeah. indicate like if so Rogan's, it's Rogan's there, crowd. it's more dudes, and if Delia's is there, it's more women, right? Or Whitney or Eliza or I took it as women. so much. Uh, you know, I didn't even think of it from that angle. I thought of it, uh, but as, I also uh, think there's an ideological component. If well, that's like the mean. comics. I was I was thinking of like yeah, the I think it is are, uh, like there's not a there isn't a booking style based on representation right it's not based on representation it's i mean i always think you should just book clubs based on uh just put a uh decibel meter <laughs> and right. just put them like what was your uh, clock, average db the, what was your average of... db from laughter <laughs> the and and if you and if it all ends up being <laughs> Because guess what? It doesn't exclude Leslie Jones has a fucking very high DB uh, in terms of like laughter and and what does that stand for? Decibels. Oh, uh, oh, oh. <laughs> decibelometer, whatever. I I always I can never remember the. the I'd name like to it, see a, like a measurement of uh, the number of point and squats people do. <laughs> well, no, of, but that's what I mean. Like yeah. like how much how how loud and how much fun is the audience having? That yeah, should be, right. and then that should be who gets booked. I'll bet, yeah. And in in a lot of ways, that is who gets booked. Like if somebody, it's pretty fair. Like the the more, the more the more popular I got, the more popular Theo got, the right. more popular. Uh, I'm I'm forget I'm blanking on people. Santino, you get closer to the ten o'clock time. Right, right, right. You get on the you know they put you on the homepage. They put you in their posts. And they're doing it because you're getting big laughs and people go, when is that person going to be there again? Yeah, right. That Well, that's the thing I didn't, when I first got into it, I, I didn't realize how much it turned turn out. Your goal is really to be the ultimate bringer. <laughs> the ultimate, but it's not, yeah. I'm not saying bringer. I'm no, not but, saying but I have to. I don't say it's bad. It's you. No, but it's, have it's 5, called people. draw. Yeah. It's yeah, not draw. bringer. It's fucking how much, yeah, I'm not inv asking them to come. Kevin Hart's the biggest draw in the world Dude, he was comedy. a draw when we started i swear to god when we i started, believe it he was a, his entire college would fill out two a tuesdays we were doing our blazing yeah. thursdays and he would win that contest every week yeah um i never seen anything like it he was like how burke kreischer he was like a van wilder dude like yeah. burke kreischer but of a black school and uh i was telling him this to uh me and jay this is when we we're still not even getting to new york yet like dicking around yeah so it's like a year or two into comedy and like kev's he was, I think he was starting to hang out with Keith Robinson. Yep. So he was going and kind of yep. was like doing all this business shit. So we were, we had like a $500. Promoting underwear. Go ahead. Yeah, right. We had a $500 <laughs> like show at a college. We we're like pretty this excited about. Yeah. Fuck, Kevin's on the phone for a college. I don't even forget this. He's on the phone. He's like, yeah, tell me one thirty grand. And he got 30,000. He's like three. We were all like the same amount of time in comedy. He was getting 30 grand from a fucking college. I was like, it didn't, wouldn't it? I mean, it wouldn't even occur to me and Jay that you could even ask for that kind of money. And did and he, they gave it to him. Yeah. Who did he? Who was he telling this to? His agent or something? I don't know that he even had an agent yet, dude. This was early. This was like sh that's why it really stuck with me because it was so early into comedy. Where yeah. I'm like, oh, he's not. And we were watching this and still dicked around maybe another year in Philly before we all went to New York. <laughs> like that's how not took you another year to ask for eight hundred. Yeah. Well, I didn't think of it like. He was just like the whole, the full, you know, and the people I've seen get like really famous where they're like a movie star and yeah. a thing and a thing. They they have like a drive I don't have. Like I, I did this to like not work a job. I yeah, hate. that's funny because when you go, I didn't realize it was a bringer thing. What did you think it was? I didn't realize the, the, uh, I was all about my little jokes and. What, but like, like but I, Harlan I was a big bringer. You know, I didn't think about the business. I, it was almost like I got into it. I dropped out of art school to be a comedian. So that's like yeah. disappointing your parents on yeah. two levels. Yeah. And fucking, uh, 
I just figured like, hey, if you're funny, you just get stuff. And I just didn't think. And there's also, I had that cult background, you know, where they didn't. Should be the name of the podcast. Yeah, no, it, it comes up a lot. Uh, but Jehovah's Witnesses, like, they're not. It's I so didn't get business, in quote, you know. I got, like, Bible preacher shit in my head. I didn't get, like, any kind of, because you're so not money focused. Yeah. Now I have like a thing where it's almost like I hate money. Like I don't hate it, but like I, but like, I think know I, it shows. I resent it. The feeling's mutual. Yeah, no, I, I mean, yeah, no, it's true. And I think it is. I think that is like, you know what I mean? Like Do you not manifest, you're negative manifesting. It's this like resentment I have, you know, I have it where I'm like, this fucking shit's my light. And like, and it, it's not a thing I'm consciously doing. It's like a thing that I got planted to me. Don't you find it humiliating though, to not have money and to have to ask people for money? Yeah, of course. But uh, uh bro, well, that would, hey, bro, that, you already took my spot, so uh, <laughs> I guess I'll have to bear it. <laughs> right, but I'm saying, don't you? Isn't that enough of an incentive to get put yourself in a position to yeah. have a regular income stream? Well, for sure. But you know, I had that situation for like two years, almost straight. That I, I never had a thing like that happen, and it's kind of feels un. I don't know. If it's unprecedented time of comedy. I guess I haven't been around long enough to know, but. The amount, especially writers now, dude. I had uh, this guy John Moore. He wrote on the, he was on the, uh, the roast of uh, Charlie Sheen with, mm-hmm. him, which was like a good fucking t- like Fucci yeah. and Sebastiano and fucking, all those guys are fucking demons, man. And uh, but anyway, I would see this guy in good rooms, like when I would write for stuff, and like I, I don't think he's got anything going on, and like it's it's now being cast. <laughs> They're casting the writers now. Yeah. So it's the representation thing. Yeah, it's funny because. The jo- not one part of the job is for me to represent anybody. The job is for me to entertain you and mm-hmm. you sit and listen to it and then laugh or don't. That's yeah. your that's the democracy of it. Yeah. You can laugh and not enjoy. Shit, you could yell out. I'm even cool with that. I'll I'll handle it. But the representation thing is this new gross. It's like this narcissist projection where it's like you're not a person. It's like what they do with like big stars, but now anybody with a little bit of something that I I'm envious of your thing. So you have to represent me. So that's why you hear this shit where it's like, I was that kid or not. No, you weren't. You're you separate motherfucker. Like they're not yeah. there to be the embodiment of you to project yourself onto. Yeah. And I think a combination of like the social media kind of depersonalizing and the, you know, generational bullshit of people that were on that for a long time <laughs> mixed with everybody's mentally ill. It's a narcissist. Like, did you watch that DSA, the democratic social America thing that was kind of viral of they're, they're all the people like, uh, Point of personal privilege, like they're taking votes on votes. It was like, dude, it's, <laughs> no, it's, I didn't see it. okay, it's hilarious. That sounds like a perfect video for you. Dude, they're calling each other comrade. And the thing that's hilarious is nothing gets done because none of them are comrades. They're almost like in a zombie movie where the zombies are together, but they all are just thinking about their, how they're going to eat a piece of you. Yeah. But they're not really working together, even though they're a swarm. That's uh-huh. what they are. There's no fucking socialist anything in it. It's just pure somebody's mental illness being couched in that. Because I, I, Jimmy Dore, uh, Barry Crimmins used to fucking, uh, I, I never checked him out, but Barry Crimmins liked him a lot. And then, uh, I thought Barry was like the last lefty I fucking liked, honestly, because yeah. he was such a thoughtful guy and his shit was like, and he had been somewhere and been, you know, he went to Nicaragua and like he yeah. had seen some shit and he didn't sound like a fucking so jerk like, off. Had, so would Randy Credico. Go ahead. I don't know him. I don't, I used to see, Atel was friends with him. But he's like, Randy Credico had like a, didn't he get some he was shit with in uh, the Russia shit? 